Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Cheetash. My name is Chris. Today we have a special episode for you. Not really special, but a continuation of our JavaScript series. I had a couple people hit me off on some comments saying, hey, when's, when's the next video going to be out? So you know what? I just bucked up and said, you know what? We're going to have one out by this weekend. So that's what we're doing here, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in today we're going to talk about the class classes in javascript we're just going to do a like a quick introduction on it um what is a class so coming from object oriented world which is where i am currently working in uh at my job using java a class is something that defines the methods and properties that an object has. Uh, this is the definition that Mergen uses in the book. And it's pretty much, whenever somebody asks me like what a class is, I pretty much tell them like it's a blueprint. It's a blueprint to make something, to make an object. So the, the basic example is like a car. You have a class car, and the class car is a blueprint for how you're going to make all these instances of a car. You're going to make a Mercedes-Benz. You're going to make a Ford F-150, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they're all going to have similar properties and actions, you know, so attributes. So, well, okay, let me back up. Properties such as, you know, you'll have your variables, Actions, you'll have your methods that are part of the class. You can call methods that are part of the class. You have access to those instance variables, et cetera, et cetera. That's usually where I start off. So what's an object? An object is an instance of a class. An object is the thing that comes off the assembly line that follows the blueprint that you have made up, which is your class. So, like I said, you have a car class and you create a Ford Fusion object, F Ford Fusion car object, right? It's an instance of that class. JavaScript, I have never used classes in JavaScript. I have never used it. I've been told you don't want to use it. And I'll pull up an article later on in this video as to maybe why you really shouldn't be using JavaScript for this reason. It should just be functional programming. But lo and behold, there are ways to do classes in JavaScript. We looked at one last time using the prototype. Prototype, what was that again? A prototype was essentially a way. Hang on, let me let me get let me get you guys like the the real definition versus me just kind of making something up on the spot. <laughs> Not that I would make it up, but I would put it in my own words and which I could understand, but I don't know if you guys will be able to understand it. All right. Prototype is another, uh, let's see here. Most objects also have a prototype. A prototype is another object that is used as a fallback source of properties. So it's like if that, particular object that you're making doesn't have that property it's going to fall back to the object prototype the parent right we talked about this last i know it's been a while but we kind of talked about this last time so who is the prototype of that empty object it's object.prototype right so if you guys look up there all right if you guys look up here at my example oops I am assigning this object, which has a function, to this proto rabbit, right? This proto rabbit. So you can see it over here. Here, let me do this for you guys. Speak function, right? So the, this proto rabbit object has one attribute called speak. And that speak is a function. So if I do something like this, let's see. Proto rabbit dot 
speak. This is going to return that string up there. Now you see the undefined. You see the undefined because this dot type and the line I have not passed in any values for those. Have not for the line I have not passed in any value. And that's pretty easy. You could just do this. Hello. Now you see there that line, the line variable is hello. We're using a template literal up there, which is basically inserting JavaScript into that into that string. They got the back ticks, the back ticks, and then you use the dollar sign brackets. That's how you insert JavaScript um, into your string. Essentially, you're evaluating an expression in there. So where does the this dot this dot type come from? This dot type. So the this dot type is going to come from you creating that, creating an object rabbit of that type, of a certain type that you pass in, which is what we are going to be doing down here. And this is one way to do it. So if I uncomment this, we have a function make rabbit where you're going to pass in a type. It's going to create a new rabbit for you based on the type that you pass in here. And we're creating this object based on this proto rabbit. So the prototype on this rabbit is, is going to be proto rabbit. This is what it's going to default to. This is going to be like the parent object, the, or excuse me, the parent that the rabbit inherits from. So it's going to be able to call this speak, the speak method. So let's see how this works here. Maybe better visually to explain it. So I have a new rabbit that I want to make. It's of a type newer. It's kind of weird. Um, Let's say this, let's say uh, purple, purple, right? Let's say, God, I spelt it wrong twice in a row. Purple. All right, we got a purple rabbit. This is going to make a purple, make a rabbit of type purple. So it's going to come up here, type this purple. Let rabbit equal to object.create proto rabbit. Okay rabbit.type, we're going to assign it to the type that we passed in, and then we're going to return the rabbit. So, and just for clarity's sake, let's do this. Let's say purple rabbit, just, just for clarity. So this new rabbit.speak, that's not going to work. We should change this to purple rabbit.speak passing in moto and look what's returned the type of rabbit is purple and the line is moto hello moto you guys remember that commercial so if i do purple rabbit let's say dot i wonder what this would say is this going to say anything purple so you see there it's it's taking this proto rabbit as like the blueprint and it's creating a rabbit from it. Essentially, this is kind of like using a constructor. It's using this proto rabbit as the blueprint. It's assigning a type to it, right? And then because it's using the proto rabbit as a blueprint, it has access to the speak line, which you can see here. And then you can see this dot type gets populated with purple. This dot type gets populated with purple because 
object.create proto rabbit. This is the, the, the blueprint. This refers to the context of, of proto rabbit, which is we're assigning here to, to this variable called rabbit. So now we can assign rabbit.type equal to type all within this context. We're not going to be able to do, you would not be able to do this if you do, you can't assign additional types to this. So if I say rabbit dot um, uh, height is equal to five, you're not going to be able to do this. Oh, it did let me do that. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. Hang on. I didn't think it would let me do that. Purple, purple rabbit dot height. I really didn't think it was going to let me do that, but it did. <laughs> okay, it did. I didn't think this would let me do that because I know on constructors, you can't add additional properties to the constructor. You have to use, um, you have, you, you can add them, but you have to add them into the constructor function itself. You can't do it in theory like I did there. So that, that is interesting. Rabbit.height dot five purple rabbit dot height but what if I did this purple purple rabbit dot proto type dot type can I do that undef can I can I read properties of undefined reading type prototype dot type There we go. Undefined purple rabbit dot prototype. And then if I comment this out, does I'm just curious, does that change anything? Oh, it does. Well, it changes that. Okay, I was just curious because we're not defining this height up here. It's not really utilizing it. Oh, okay, but we don't really have necessarily like a constructor function here to where we would define this. So I guess this is a good good time to get down to con like a constructor because that's kind of what we're doing down here. Okay, I'm going to comment all this stuff up top here, but hopefully this makes sense, guys. So actually, we were able to do this. Um, hopefully this makes sense on creating an object using a prototype using object.create. So now, let me comment that. We're going to come down here. Now we're going to have like kind of like a constructor here. Function rabbit passing in the type, and then this.type is equal to type. So you're assigning the type that you pass in to the context of this. Kind of like uh, what we what we did here. What we did here. Now, the difference is we're going to be using the new keyword, which will, as you guys can see from my PowerPoint slide, it's going to achieve the result of a constructor. And let me see if, because Marijan makes a point about this. Marijan makes a point about this. If you put the keyword new in front of a function called the function is treated as a constructor, this means that an object with the right prototype is automatically created, bound to this in the function and returned at the end of the function. So this, let me uncomment this, rabbit.prototype.speak equals function line. Console, uh, let's not return console.log. Let's just return the line. Um, this essentially is kind of doing what this speak line, this function declaration up here is doing. You're defining a function that all other rabbits that you create are going to be able to have access to. See, I was, okay, I, I was close. Maybe it's lowercase prototype. 
So you're telling, okay, this function rabbit, the, there's going to be, you're assigning this speak variable to a function that's going to return the line that you pass in. And you're attaching it to the prototype property of rabbit. I, I hope I'm making sense here. So now when we try to do the same thing up top, let weird rabbit equal new rabbit weird. We just created a rabbit of a type weird, similar to how we did a type of purple up here, make rabbit purple. So when I do this, weird rabbit dot speak, it's returning high, the param that I pass in, because I have access to this, because this is of a type rabbit, and then we assigned to the, the, the prototype uh, property, this speak function, the speak which is assigned to a function. Uh, if I do this, weird ribbit dot type, what, it's gonna return the string weird, right? But now, okay, let's let's do our test earlier. So now if I do weird ribbit dot height is equal to five. And let's see, weird ribbit dot height. That is so funny. I was able to do it. Okay. See, again, I didn't think you'd be able to do this. I thought you would have to, you would have to define this dot height up here like this. And you can have like a default, default it to five, or you could have, you could pass in a height up here and you could say like this, right? So something's gonna scream at me. Um, so here I could do five, So that's returning five equals six, I wonder. Oh, and it does change it, wow. Okay, I was completely wrong. I didn't think you'd be able to do this. I thought it, it would have to come from here, from essentially what this function here is, is essentially a constructor function. So you can see it's kind of achieving the same thing that we did up there. Now, let me comment this out. And this is where we get into the class keyword. So now you can, this is just way more um, cleaner, I guess. Class rabbit, instead of a function rabbit, it's gonna have a constructor function, essentially th what this function is, right? And so now, if I do that sem same thing, so let's say let white rabbit equal to new rabbit. The constructor only has one parameter, it's a type, and we'll, we'll say white. Now, right rabbit dot speak, uh, <laughs> Hello, Neo. The type of rabbit is white and the line is hello, Neo. Classes in JavaScript, it just, this is a much cleaner way to write it, maybe less code than, you know, doing all of this, especially doing something like this up here. Maybe more concise, maybe more readable. I don't know if it's less code, but... You can then attach other methods to this too. So you could have like a method um, run and then return I'm running. So now white rabbit dot run. 
I'm running. Yeah. So this is how you would write a class in JavaScript. Again, why would you want to do this? In Java, I do this for types that are, because it's so heavily correlated with uh, databases. In Spring Architecture, we have POJOs, plain old Java objects, essentially classes, that represent tables in our database. So when information gets recorded, updated, uh, deleted from, from the tables, we're able to have like a one-on-one -on -one relationship between like the code and the table. So when I have like one, let's say we have like a rabbit table, right? A rabbit table. Every time we create a new object, we can insert that new object into the table as it is because each variable, let's say it just has one variable type, right? It's going to represent one column in the table. So it's going to know which, you know, you're going to be able to have access to the objects that you create in the table. Hopefully I'm making sense there. But in JavaScript, again, I, I don't know of, I've never done this in JavaScript. I don't know because it's it's front end. It's meant to be functional. You're running it um, in the browser. I mean, I know now you can use Node and you can have like a backend server with this. But I was reading an article. This one right here. I'll pull this over here for you guys. Please stop using classes in JavaScript. And he, he makes some good points here. See, some of this code is similar to uh, what I did. Classes came aboard in 2015 in uh, ES6. And um, now you could do classes before ES6, but the class keyword came about in ES6, class car. So why not? It's just a bad idea. <laughs> Binding issues, he writes. Uh, performance issues, uh, private variables, encapsulation. So that's the thing, like, you can't really have private variables in JavaScript. Now, in Java, you can. You can encapsulate the code in your classes so that other classes don't have access to those variables. Um, strict hierarchies. So if something is a class... And in JavaScript, you have a class. Now you have to like be strictly adherent to the blueprint, to that blueprint. So like I said, you know, I'm not going to be able to create a rabbit here like this. I don't think that's going to let me. Right, right? Yeah, I mean, it's not going to let me. you have to follow the constructor. So now if something changes in your code and all of a sudden like your boss says, oh, okay, we, we're we updating our classes. Uh, we want our rabbits now to have a height. So now everywhere else in your code, you're going to have to add in a height. You're going to have to come back here to the class, change, you know, this to have a height as well. You know, you're going to have this dot height is equal to uh, height. Well, and here's the other thing too, is like you don't, you don't need to declare a type for this height. So maybe somebody might pass in a five, right? But somebody might pass in five, right? Now in Java, we have ways of dealing with this where you can actually explicitly say here, like a private, string type private int height but in javascript you don't you don't really de like declare the type here so that's another reason to maybe not use it because the react team tells you to you know i'm actually learning react right now so that's kind of funny um but yeah again i've just i haven't really seen it i i, I don't i feel like you're kind of asking for trouble on the front end using this because you have to it's very strict you have to rely on the blueprint again from the back end perspective 
it, it would work out great because it's so heavily tied to the DB that you need, you need stuff to follow along the same lines of your tables. But in the front end, I just feel like you're, you're asking for trouble, possibly. But what do I know? I don't, <laughs> I'm just giving you guys my two cents. Um, that's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for listening. I'm going to have to... S- Thank you for getting on me. I, f- I forget the folks. I would shout you out um, that commented saying, hey, when are we going to get another video? And thank you for doing that. I should be I should do more JavaScript videos. I'm really heavily focused on 1984 right now, uh, which check that out. We'll have uh, another episode out this week on that. Um, thank you guys so much for listening. Let me know if you have any questions, comments. I'm still trying to figure out the PowerPoints, guys. I still got to do that. I think what I might do, somebody had mentioned doing a Google uh, Doc link, something like that. So I'm sorry. I got to do that. A lot of things I got to do. But thank you guys for sticking with me. And I also want to shout out the author of this article on Everyday Doc Codes. I'll put a link to it. Uh, Michael Krasnoff. Shout out to you, Michael Krasnov. You made some really good points in here and some um, a good guide here too as well if you guys want to take a look at this article on uh, classes in JS. Guys, it's been Cheatash. Tune in next time. Thank you guys so much for listening. My name is Chris. Take care.